What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Home Built Workshop. What are we doing today, you might ask? We are back at some leather work. I am making this leather pouch for a Leatherman and a flashlight and mistakes are about to be made. Stick around, check it out. Well, like a lot of you guys, I'm sure there are a handful of things that I carry with me every single day. My EDC, one of them being this little Streamlight MicroStream flashlight, but another one that I really enjoy, this Leatherman Charge. I carry this thing with me all the time. The main thing that drew me to this Leatherman in particular is the pocket clip. I like to be able to clip things in my pocket. That's also why I carry this little Streamlight flashlight. I carry these things together all the time. There are a million things that I really like about this Leatherman, but there's one big thing that I really, really don't like, and that is the pocket clip. Now, don't get me wrong, I do like the pocket clip to be able to clip this thing onto my pocket, which is what it's designed for, but what I don't like about it is the fact that if you hit it on the side, the pocket clip will snap right off if you hit it on an angle. I've done this several times, and unfortunately, that piece is not covered by the Leatherman warranty. Now their warranty is great. In my experience, I've sent this thing back to them, I don't know, three times or something like that to fix different issues, but the pocket clip is not covered. You have to buy a new one. That is a drag. So what I wanna make is a leather pouch that will hold these the exact same way that I carry them when I have them clipped to my pocket, but they will be contained in this pouch. I'll be able to clip the pouch on my belt, still have these tools all together, and I don't have to buy a new pocket clip for the Leatherman. Let's see what happens. First, we need to make a mold. I'm gonna use this piece of half inch plywood, kind of lay out where I need these pieces to sit. Here's a couple of pieces of wood as a spacer. And now I'll trace around the rough outline of the pieces. And then I'll straighten up those lines using a square. Now I can just remove that material on the bandsaw. So now with my plywood piece cut, basically this is going to become the mold so we can wet mold this leather around the Leatherman and the flashlight. They will fit in here, we'll clamp the leather around it, let it dry, and hopefully have a nice molded case. When you do a mold like this, it's important to make sure that you leave enough room in here to make up for the thickness of the leather. Hopefully I've left enough, we're gonna find out. After posting my recent video about strops, I decided to actually try stropping a utility knife and you know what? It's awesome. I will do this a lot more often. Typically, I just change the blade, but now this thing cuts like a dream. So now I've got my piece of leather. I'm gonna soak it for just a little while in some warm water. It's gonna help soften it up so that way we can mold this. The water is going to soak in the leather and make it really pliable so that way it's going to really give nicely when we clamp this thing down. All right, let's see what we can come up with here. I'm going to first try to work the leather down as much as I can by hand before putting the mold on top. And I'll just slowly begin to clamp everything down, pressing the leather into place. All right, I think we got it. It's gonna let it dry for a little while. It's kind of teetering precariously, but I think everything's clamped down. The mold didn't break. Everything looks like it cinched down around the items. I think we're good, let's let it dry. After letting the leather dry overnight, I can now remove the clamps. Well, that worked out really well. Now, due to the molding process, the leather kind of has to deform a little bit in certain spots. So this top edge, you can see, is not really straight. So I need to square that up. To do that, I'm just gonna put this piece back in the mold. That'll hold it nice and flat. And now, I can run this edge along my bandsaw, trim it right down. Now I'm gonna use a compass set to about a quarter of an inch 
and scribe a line all the way around the outside. This is where I need to trim the leather off and it's gonna determine the final size of the piece. And for that little area below the flashlight, I'm just kind of sketching it in where it looks good to my eye. It's really the fun part when you make things custom for yourself or your family or whatever. You get to do it however you want to do it. <laughs> there's nobody that can tell you you can't do it that way because it's for you. And it, I don't know, there's just some sort of cool satisfaction to that. And now I'll just cut along the line to remove the excess material this will take the pouch down to about its final size. And there is my template for the back panel. And now just by eye, I'm gonna draw out the shape for the back panel, and then I'll cut out two of those. Now, if you're wondering why I have two back panels cut, that is because I'm going to sandwich between it a belt clip since this would normally get riveted to the back. I don't want the rivet to be poking through the front where it's gonna scrape on the Leatherman. So I'm going to sandwich that in between two layers. That way, when I put it together, the rivet and everything is covered. There's nothing scraping against either the flashlight or the Leatherman. Plus, when I have this doubled up, it's gonna be nice and sturdy, make for a nice sturdy pouch. And now I'll just make a couple of marks about where I want to put the belt clip. And then I'll just connect the dots with a utility knife. Now I'll temporarily install the clip. And I'll make a small mark where I need to punch the hole. Just using the little rotary punch to punch the hole for the rivet. Now we can put our clip into place. And I'm going to use a little double cap rivet to hold it all down. I have this little setting tool, this little anvil. And that is going nowhere. And now it's time to break out the contact cement and start gluing this thing together. First, I'm going to glue the two back panels together. I'll just apply a really good coat of contact cement. We'll let that sit for a few minutes and tack up. After about five minutes or so, the contact cement is tacky to the touch. But it's not coming off my finger. We are ready to stick this first layer together. You do want to try to be as careful as you can to not have any contact cement on your fingers or smear it through some that you spilled on your workbench, like I did. It can show. A lot of times you are able to clean it off, but it's a lot easier if you don't have to clean it. And now using a small tack hammer, I'll just lightly hammer those pieces together. This helps promote a really strong bond between the two pieces of leather. And now I can glue on the front molded panel as well. So now I just need to spend a little bit of time working out the final shape, cleaning up the edges, trimming everything flush. I've left these pieces a little bit large. That way I do have some room to kind of work with the shape and everything, get it fine tuned the way I like. I'll first trim off some of the excess and round over the corners just a little bit using a knife. This will remove the majority of the material. And I'll clean it up the rest of the way using the belt grinder. And now using a beveling tool, I'll bevel the edge all the way around. One thing I forgot to do at the very beginning is bevel the edge of this piece before I molded it. So now I can't really get in there. So I think, I think I can just use a little piece of sandpaper, kind of smooth that up just a little bit. It's not super critical, but would have made it look a little bit cleaner. Just didn't think about that. I guess you got to think about 10 steps ahead especially with edges that you're not gonna be able to get to very well later on. Not a big deal, we'll just use some sandpaper. Boy, who forgot to do this the first time around? Oh yeah, that was me. It's fine. 
Now I'm going to use my Dremel tool to lightly profile the openings of these pouches. This is going to make it a little bit easier to grab the tools and pull them out. Now I'll apply a little dye to the leather. This will darken it up and I really like this shade of brown. Now using a pair of wing dividers, I'm going to scribe my stitch line all the way around the outside. This just gives me a guide to follow to help keep the stitches nice and straight. I'll also scribe the stitches down the center. And now I can start punching all the holes for the stitching. For a long time I've been wanting to get a set of larger chisels. I've been using 3mm well I was finally able to get a set of 5mm chisels and that's what I'm using for this project. How many of you see the mistake I made? So I made a mistake. Did you guys notice what it was? This stitch line right here lands right on the belt clip. <laughs> I can't punch it. It punched right into the belt clip. I did not foresee that. Remember when I said you got to be about 10 steps ahead? I think I was only nine <laughs> and totally missed that. Now, I'm going to try to take this apart. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Worst case is I'm going to have to cut a couple of new panels. I think. I can get this off. I actually kind of tore the glue seam a little bit trying to get the chisels out of there. So I think this front molded piece can be saved. I'm not sure about the back. I'm going to use some heat, try to separate that glue. Then I can stitch that, glue it back together, and it should be fine. Let's see what happens. Again, I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to find out. Mistakes are proof you're trying, right? I'm using a heat gun to heat up the blade of a utility knife. It seemed like once I got some heat in there, it started to separate the seam pretty good. And then finally, I was able to grab a hold of it with my hands. And after a lot more heat, this thing really just came apart, but it had to get really hot. Ooh, it's working. A little too well, picking off the heat. I'm gonna try to leave part of this together. I think that'll make it better when I try to re-glue this, if I leave at least one side kind of attached, I'll have better luck lining up my stitch lines again. Because this is punched all the way around, so I'm a little concerned with keeping everything lined up. And I think if I'm able to get this done without separating this side, I think that'll make a big difference. Now I've got this thing ready to stitch up. I've got it clamped in a couple of hand screw clamps. Works really great for a stitching pony. I've used it several times. One of these days I'll get around to building an actual stitching pony, but for now the clamps work well. I'm just gonna use a saddle stitch to stitch up this seam. Then I'll be able to glue this back together. I'm really happy with the way this came apart. I think it's gonna work out really well. Almost like it never happened, but you guys know better now. So let's get this sewn up. All I need to do is apply some more contact cement on the back panels. Now I can just stick this back together. And since I didn't really separate everything, it looks like it's going to line up really well. And while I was fixing this little mistake, something else I realized is that since this is two layers of leather wrapping around here, I also need to continue my stitch line all the way around, basically wrap the entire thing. If I'd have completely forgot to stitch the top of this, I think the worst thing that would have happened is that the two panels would have started to separate. And at that time, I would have realized that I was missing the stitching there and I could have just punched it and stitched it up then. It wouldn't have been the end of the world, but I'm glad that I noticed this now rather than later on. What is this, like mistake number three? And it's at this point in the project where I really notice how much easier it is to do a saddle stitch now that I'm using a five millimeter chisel. The holes are way easier to pass the thread through. Done. With the stitching anyway. Now I'm just gonna wet the edges of the piece to soften them just a little bit and I'll slick the edges nice and smooth using a wooden slicker. And 
Then we'll wrap this pouch up with a couple of coats of Neat's foot oil. Well, this is looking pretty good. The leather's looking nice and saturated with the oil, as well as my hands. I'm just gonna set this aside for a while, maybe a couple of hours, let the oil soak in and dry up a little bit. And with the Neat's foot oil soaked in, now this thing is ready to be put to use. Put our Leatherman in there, slip our Streamlight flashlight in there. This thing has really good retention. Right now it's a little bit snug getting that Leatherman out of there, but I think that's gonna loosen up over time. Man, that really holds on to him really well. Now I don't have to worry about that silly pocket clip on this Leatherman. Like I said, I really like this Leatherman. I'm not putting it down at all, but the fact that the pocket clip breaks like it does and it doesn't fall under the warranty, that just bums me out. But now I don't have to worry about that. We got this sweet pouch ready to go, clip it on the belt and move on. So thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this project, even though some mistakes were made. To me, that's kind of a good thing because that's how you learn. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Thanks a lot for watching guys. We'll see you next time. So I'm going to sandwich that in between. Dang it. This bottle of contact cement was almost gone. Good thing I bought a new one, but I just took the lid off and the brush is stuck to the bottom. Well, I guess uh, we're done with this. Oh, I'm spilling glue everywhere. It's getting soggy. Soggy, soggy. I made a mistake. <laughs> These things happen from time to time. We just figure out, get off me. You see that? The moth was on me. <laughs> That's why they say mistakes are proof that you are trying. That is, I'm trying to do leather work and making mistakes. <laughs> I need coffee.